So I thought I would do this little intermission type video and just say hello and tell you what's going on and what to expect um, because I'm really changing things up right now. A lot is going on here in Hawaii with this COVID, COVID um, disaster. I'm serious. Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, the whole, um, Hawaii is super stupid. Like, you can't even believe the whole COVID thing here. They're trying to make it a law that you're not allowed to argue with the store clerk when they're trying to enforce the mandates on you. They're saying that you can be charged they're saying that you can be charged $5,000 in a year in jail for not wearing a mask outside unless you're in the water. I actually got ticketed in December while I was sitting quietly in my car. I wasn't even doing anything. And I was at a stoplight and I went to reach and grab my chapstick and my and I had to pick up my phone to grab it. And I got ticketed for a moving violation using my cell phone. And I'm like, I wasn't driving and I wasn't using my cell phone. And all of Hawaii is just like, oh, well, that's the law. And I'm like, that is corruption. So it's just been really interesting over the last couple months and also with um, the lack of business, just realizing I don't want to be here. This is this this is a complete police state with some very small-minded people. With we're surrounded by lava, a lot of hothead people, a lot of emotional people. Anyways, 
I gotta be careful in getting out of here. I don't wanna say too much. I'm still trying to fight the ticket. It's like a $300 ticket. Obviously, I'm meeting, I met like one nice person through the whole process, you know? So it's just been like a really interesting time to sit back and be like, okay, God, what's gonna happen next? This is a big storm. You know, where should I be? So I went inward. Baby, at it? You get him, girl. You get him. Good girl. <laughs> so, yeah, I just was like, wow, I'm totally leaving island. I'm gonna go on this trip. And I'm, and it's a lot of work. Everything is a little bit more challenging right now because everyone's like, oh, it's COVID, I'm not, you know, using it to their advantage, whatever that is. And so customer service has been really bad when we don't even talk about online shopping. That's a whole other monster. But just trying to figure out how to actually get off the island with a dog during COVID without a mask you know, and so I'm having to like create all my stuff, or getting to, I should say, I'm not like a sufferer. So I only do things I want to do, so. But it's a big project is my point. I'm having to, getting to pack all my things, but then still keep some things here for living. So I'm supposed to be without my stuff for 20 days and I'm like condensing an apartment into my future of a vehicle that I don't know what it is. So I'm looking at maybe getting a Ford Econoline, obviously. Obviously, I want headroom. I want to be able to stand up. It was like I kind of got a little bit of practice here in Hawaii when I was doing van life here. And it was just, I was doing van life here just kind of coincidentally to just write books. And then anyways, unfolding into the reality of actually, you know, people do this. And so what I learned was having headspace is like, if you could stand up, that's a game changer. It is a game changer to stand up. So I'm looking at the ability to stand up, but I also am on a budget. So, you know, with the Econo lines, you can get a high roof, um, but then that's a lot of vehicle. That's a lot of mass, that's a lot of gas. So I'm not sure if that's the way I wanna go. So I'm also looking at, so it's either the Ford, um, Ford Econo lines or looking at um, a Toyota 4Runner or a Honda Element. So those ones would obviously be better on the gas mileage, more versatile in places that I wanna be and go. And then the route I would do to still get that, to achieve that standing upness would be, um, I'm gonna go for an awning and I'm not gonna do the rooftop tent. I'm gonna still do the conversion inside. Hi baby. So yeah, so there's just so much stuff and I'm gonna get, I'm, do, I'm gonna do another video that actually shows you my whole, pricing list and gives you, and, and I'll obviously do um, a video once I actually get my rig and show you all the stuff that I have been um, researching. It's actually like super cool and interesting to research this stuff. So I'm researching how to move, how to move off the island with a dog during COVID without a mask, doing all that. And you still, even, even without COVID, it's still challenging. So I'm having to jump through all these hoops while still dealing with like, you know, tying up loose ends here in Hawaii, while I'm also planning this huge road trip, which I have no idea what it's gonna be like. Is it gonna take me five years? Is it gonna take me five months? Is it gonna take me 50 years? I don't know, I have more on that. But it's just fun already, you know, because I'm planning all these things. And so once I get there, I'm gonna get the vehicle. I'm gonna stay with my sister-in-law. You know, I have family in California that'll help me. And then I'm gonna take off hopefully by my, my target is that I wanna be in Montana by June or July to see the flowers. So that's kind of where I'm going. And then we'll see, I don't know. It's gonna be really fun and exciting and I'm give, gonna give you guys all the details and information. I'm super excited about the van build because I feel like I've perfected it. I lived in a van here in Hawaii for almost three years and I started it as a minimalist, like as a yogi going into it. Like I don't need anything, I just need one bowl. And, and worked it out. And so now coming into this in, an, in another way with money, with intention, and this list and realizing all the resources now. So it's gonna be really fun to do a build video and show you all the stuff that I get and how I did all that. So, and then there's the whole journey and I'm looking at Sedona, where to camp in Sedona, where to camp in Arizona, where to camp in Utah, where to camp in 
Montana, um, I have a special interest in Wyoming. I'm gonna spend a lot of time there. Um, where to go to North Dakota, I have some family. That's where my family's from is uh, uh, Wyoming, North Dakota. Maybe some other places, but um, anyway. So yeah, there's just a lot of like planning too and researching all these states. I'm gonna go, well, how, how much is the gas gonna cost? You know, where do you stay? How do you get water? And I have it all figured out. So lots of information coming, lots of fun, cool stuff coming. I can't believe the amazing things that we can see on this planet. It's amazing, it's amazing. One thing that I was thinking about doing that I don't know if I'm going to be able to is called um, Shangri-La. It's in the Supai Nation area of Utah. It's like a 12, 12 mile hike just to be able to get to the campground. I don't know if me and my dog can handle that. Or you could um, take an airplane in or ride horses, not an airplane, a helicopter, or ride horses. And I don't know that either one of those are gonna work for us either. So that to me, if anybody ever has that on their bucket list, that is a really cool thing to do. I might do it with my mom later, but that's one thing you just find along the way is like well, these amazing things. So it's really fun to research and watch all the YouTube videos about all the people that are already traveling. Yeah, so, and I'm just gonna leave you with this adventure tip because this is a long journey. Like I said, I don't know if it's gonna take me five months, five years, or 50 years. Don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know, and it's gonna be cool. But at the end of the day, I have this idea that when I do do the whole trip, I might become, I might buy a boat at the other end and do the East Coast Loop. I don't know about the East Coast Loop. I gotta figure it all out. There's so many possibilities, but because that takes a different kind of boat. So I might do the, maybe that would be the perfect way to do it. Maybe do the East Coast Loop to see if I can be a boat person on like more of a safe water. And then if I like that, then I can get it, um, a catamaran really. And then I can go all the way to India via the ocean, but also like travel the ocean, the world via the ocean. So, I mean, come on, I, this is a huge dream, but whatever, why not dream it? Reach for the stars, land on a planet. <laughs> So I'm excited and I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yeah, I think we're making a lot of progress on the COVID, you know, New World Order takeover situation. I should probably not even say the C word anymore. I should start like strictly calling it cooties. Um, so I, I'm watching everybody, you know, all the states lifting. It's just the whole thing unfolding. This is life. And it's really interesting to, to learn so much and realize like, wow, if we, if, if we would have known now what we knew then, you know, it's like we've actually had globalist puppets as our president for the last 40 years. We've just been like thinking everything was normal and, and it was all a plan. So that's really interesting. And yeah, I got to be careful about what I say because this is, you know, censorship time. I want to stay connected to you guys. I do have a bit shoot. I do have other alternative stations, but you know, YouTube is something and I'm looking forward to sharing more and setting up my whole system to share more and getting better equipment to share more, learning how to use my equipment better to share more. My audio is something that I'm really working on. You'll be pleased to know on my wish list is a lot of things to help my audio <laughs> and just my videoing um, in general. So yeah. All right, guys, well, happy everything. Hope you're doing well. Stay strong, stay united. I think we're gonna be okay, and this is just a wild ride. You know, Spirit basically said to me at the end of my journey, it was like a realization that humans are, are, have, are not having a spiritual experience. It's spiritual beings having a human experience. And so there's a, there's a sense of desire for drama. And yeah, some of it just overdo it. So that's, that's a way of looking at things. I guess I'll just leave that with you, you know. We as humans, we like the drama. We like the action but maybe we should just slow down a little bit so it doesn't get so crazy, right? Let's keep it, let's keep it PG-13, let's keep it normal. See you guys soon. I'll show you some clips about some of the things I'm doing to get ready. Okay, maybe see you on the other side.